Welcome to Ali Beg ABTV, which is brought to you by Saltire Energy, the global market leader in specialist drilling equipment rental, torquing, testing, refurbishment, and welding. And also by Lux Scott, a jet class luxury vehicle company. If you're looking to travel anywhere in style to an event, these are the guys to get in touch. There are their details. Hi everybody, welcome to my first celebrity edition of Beg's Banter. This is where I talk to a well-known celeb about their career and their love of football. And I was absolutely thrilled to have caught up with a guy who is a star of the stage, film and television. And he made his name in what I think is one of the most iconic British movies of all time, Quadrophenia. It is no less than Phil Daniels. Phil starred as Jimmy in Quadrophenia, and roughly at the same time, he also starred in Scum as Richards. He famously narrated Blair's Park Life, and he's also starred in numerous television shows, including Time Gentlemen, Please, and EastEnders. He's also appeared in many different roles in the theatre in London's West End, and I was absolutely thrilled to have spoken to him after many years from his home in London. Hi Phil, it's absolutely fantastic to see you again. It's been so long since the last time we saw each other, so thank you so much for coming on. And look mate, yeah. look, look, top button. Oh yeah, I was, I was having a bit of fun there. <laughs> <laughs> always, always the top button. As soon as I saw that tweet, I was like, yes, mate, yes, we're singing from yeah. the same hymn page here. Brilliant. Mate, let, let's get straight into it. Let's go right back to the early days. Was acting and performing always in your DNA? I think probably performing was in my DNA. I was, even when I was little, I used to sort of sing along to the, you know, whatever records were were on the radio or, you know, my mum and dad would play records. I enjoyed it, but not the acting really. There were, I mean, I don't think there was any, the opportunities for all that. Were in, I was from King's Cross, mm -hmm. you know, pretty working class family. My dad was a caretaker. Um, there wasn't the opportunities, but I met a lady called Anna Sher who used to go to the um, closed schools in the summer holidays and do acting workshops by accident I went there and that's where I sort of started acting really when I was about 13. Can you recall the process which saw you casted for Jimmy in Quadrophenia? Did you have to do a screen test? I did have to do a screen test for Quadrophenia. Yeah the, the casting was a bit weird because what happened was I'd already done I did a film called Zulu Dawn and I'd heard uh, that they were auditioning for Quadrophenia on the, um, Bob Hoskins was in Zulu Dawn and he had a tele, he was living in a mud hut, but he had a telephone in there. He let me borrow his telephone. I got a call saying they're doing Quadrophenia auditions. So I came back and I wasn't very well. I got some lurgy out there and uh, I went for the audition and I, I was so, you know, it was like a virus. I just wanted to lie down. And I was terrible. And um, so I thought that was it. Yeah, I hadn't got the part. But the director, to his credit, said, you weren't well. Why don't you come and audition again? So I auditioned again. They liked me. And we had a screen test. I think there was three of us went for a screen test. It was me, Phil Davis, who ended up playing Chalky, and Johnny Rotten. Really? Yes. Johnny Rotten. No way. And there is, a, I don't know if this is myth or true, but they quite fancied Johnny Rotten playing the part, but no one would insure him. No, seriously. But I don't know if that is true or, or yeah. not. I'd like it not to be true, obviously, because <laughs> I'd be first choice. <laughs> but it is quite a funny, quite a funny story. Amazing. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Um, were you a mod? As a youngster? No, I wasn't a mod as a youngster. I was, never, I was, I was never a mod. Um, I was a hippie, really. <laughs> 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 so yeah, um, 
No, I was I was various things. I think I might have missed mod. We were kind of suede heads. It was like skinheads, suede heads. Um, you know, we wore red town in socks and and stay press and Ben Sherman's, but we weren't quite mods. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Um, during the filming, did you ever get a sense from your cast members that that you guys were making something pretty special here? No, I don't think Quadrophenia, we felt it was special. I mean, I, it was weird because I'd bought the album Quadrophenia as a kid. Okay. And I knew all about the album. So I'd had a head start and I was into the album. And then I got the part, got to meet the Who, and it was all a bit, it was all a bit weird and it was all a bit special. Um, but doing the film, you never felt, oh, we're in for a, you know, it was like a, doing a British movie. There was lots of swearing in it and lots of sort of mad kids doing mad things. So at the time, it's quite, it was quite risque. So I, I never thought the film would ever catch on. And I think it didn't catch. I mean, when it came out in the cinema, a lot of people saw it. But I don't think it was till DVDs came out and, you know, the, the, the word spread like the gospel, you know, that it became quite a big film. Um, it's, it's really interesting because I remember when you and I used to play football together for the Arsenal X Pros and Celebrity Football Team and we used to, to talk about the movies and levels of fame and all that sort of stuff. And whenever people talk to me about my time in Bad Boys Inc., the boy band, because it, it's such a long time ago, it feels like I'm almost talking about somebody else. So uh -huh. when, we, when we talk about Quadrophenia and that time in your life, do you get the same sense that you're almost talking talking about somebody else? Yes. Um, yes, indeed. I, I am talking about someone else and a time in my life. Obviously, it's a big it's been a big part of my life. Um, and for years, I sort of disowned it uh, because I was fed up of it being you know, what people remembered me for, you know, and I'd been, obviously, I'd done lots of other things. Um, so for years, I thought, oh, sod that, you know, I've had enough. Mm -hmm. But yeah, as time goes by, if you can't beat and join them, I've sort of quite enjoy the notoriety and I'm sort of interested in why people love it so much. And, um, you know, I never really did Twitter or Instagram or anything like that. And since I've done that, and since my girlfriend's into the mod scene uh, and stuff, I've really kind of enjoyed, you know, encompassing it again and enjoying it. Mm. You see, that's fascinating because Quadrophenia sort of helped develop my taste for that type of music, for the fashion. And I, even though I was, sort of, I, you know, I grew up late 70s, early 80s, and even then my sort of sense of fashion was defined by Quadrophenia. But what you just said there was is fascinating to me and it strikes a chord because for years, I never spoke about the band. I never spoke about it. If anybody ever tried to indulge me in conversation, I would change the conversation quickly because I just was uncomfortable talking about it. And like what you're saying now, how your girlfriend has helped and all that sort of stuff. My wife, when she was my girlfriend, helped me sort of bring it out it is it, it why do you think why do you think we did that i don't know uh, i i did it i know why i did it because i i wanted to people to know me for other things and i've done a lot of other things yeah um and i was always warned uh, a friend of mine called cosmo landsman who became uh, a journalist uh, the film critic for the times newspaper in the end of the day but he was a good mate of mine when i was a kid when I was offered the part, I was in a band and stuff and doing other things as well. He said, he was the only one who said, don't do it. He said, if you do it, you'll always just be remembered for that. Okay. And he was kind of right, you know, but, and that, that irked me, that irked me a bit. But as time goes, as time's gone on, I thought, you know, what does it matter? You know, what is fame? Well, who cares anyway? Encompass it, enjoy it, you know? Not many people get the chance in their lives to be famous for one thing, two, you know, and I've been lucky enough 
and you know being famous or whatever it is so enjoy it yeah yeah i'm, I'm totally with you it, it's it's funny now because now i i'm like you i can completely embrace it i can talk about it openly very comfortably i have no issues with it anymore because it makes me think how lucky i was to have been given that opportunity when there's yeah. millions of people out there who would give their left arm to do something that I did. So I, I've, I've now come to accept that. So I, I'm totally with you. So let's move on to scum. Uh -huh. They kind of came out at the same time. Um, again, another brilliant movie, brutal, but brilliant. So how did you prepare to play Richards, your character? Um, well, Scam was a, is, is quite an odd one because it was made twice. Oh. Um, originally, it was a play for today yes. um, for the BBC. And we made the whole thing. Obviously, you know, I'm from King's Cross, Islington. Um, I know about tough kids. Mm. I mean, I was never much of a tough kid myself. I was always into playing the guitar and stuff. But I knew tough kids. And I knew kids had been at Borstal. So for Richards, who was a bit of a hard man, I kind of knew where it, I knew where it, it, it came from so I could play it. But we made it for BBC and um, there was a magistrate, was an ex-magistrate, was head of the BBC at the time. And there's a scene in Scum where a magistrate comes round to inspect all the kids. And we say, we're fine, sir. We're told to say we're fine, sir. And uh, he felt that there was too much violence in it in too short a time. So the BBC banned it. Mm. So it was never shown. Mm. And some snazzy film producers thought, oh, maybe, you know, I'm not saying they were opportunists, but we made it again. And this was, I made the first one before Quadrophenia, the second one after Quadrophenia. Okay. Um, and we made it again, slightly different bit of a different cast we made scum again and um that was released in the cinema okay it's it's a fantastic movie i love it if anybody hasn't seen it please watch it because it's a fantastic british movie it's, it's not one to take your girlfriend to is it no? no don't take your girlfriend on the first date to watch no. <laughs> <laughs> see that type of character that you got to play yeah having obviously immersed yourself in the role researched the role all that sort of stuff when you stop filming and the cameras have stopped rolling how do you get the character out of your head because uh, because you know I, I mean you know i'm quite a method actor when i'm doing it but you know i'm i haven't got a feeling of hurting anybody so in i just once the filming's over it's over really mm. for me and uh i think it's all you know when or when people go home with it and do it at home, uh, it's, it's all bollocks to me, all that. Yeah, so I've never understood that either. You yeah. Know, you hear I mean, yes, yes, yes. Immerse yourself in it when you're doing it, 100%, all the way. But when you go home, be yourself. Yeah, good advice. Very good advice. Right, so let's get some quick fire questions in here because obviously we're right. talk football as well. So for those who don't know, who do you support? Chelsea. Why? Because when I was young and watched football, I mean, my dad took me to the Arsenal. He was never a great football fan, my dad. He was into fishing. Um, but I never, I didn't like fishing. I didn't like killing the worm. But <laughs> anyway, uh, he went, took me to Arsenal. And, but Chelsea were kind of a more, more extravagant. And I liked Peter Osgood. Was my, I was a big fan of Peter Osgood. And my mate's dad, used to have a car and they all used to go at Chelsea. So I tagged along with them and I became a Chelsea fan straight away. Okay. So can you recall your first game at Stamford Bridge? Yes. My first game, I think, was in 1968 and it was Chelsea v Fulham. And it was a one-all draw. Okay. Um, and I, all I can remember, the vision I've got in my head is just seeing the colours and being in the stand. I, I was there. I could just... I just picture being there. It's funny. Who doesn't matter who I ask. Everybody remembers their first game of football. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's uncanny. Okay, you, you mentioned Peter Osgood. Was he your first childhood hero? Yes, really. Peter Osgood was my big. He was my big childhood hero. I mean, I liked George Best as well mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I'll come, you've got another question about a, a goal, and I think George Best wins that. Okay. But yeah, George Best, but Peter Osgood was my big hero. Okay, now how often did you go to games? I think we used to go quite a bit. Is We used to go um, to the other end from the shed and we used to get there about half past one, you know, and soak in the atmosphere for like an hour and a half. That's You used to get a good spot because it was all standing there. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I, I think we used to go most home games. Okay. Right, let's go back to the, to the acting. So I know that theatre has played and continues to play a huge role in your career and your life. So where I wanted to go with this question was, when I was performing, I preferred to perform live. I loved the live performing because I think it gave us a psychological edge. I think it made us better knowing it was live. So if I can use that as a benchmark for the question, okay. what did you prefer? Did you prefer to make movies or do you prefer the live aspect of performing? The yeah, live and movies, theatre and movies, they're very different and both are, take a certain technique and they're both brilliant. Um, but in a way, I've always been a theatre, I like theatre acting because it's like all over, you have to do it for an hour and a half or two hours in one foul swoop. I mean, and you rehearse for a long time, so you've got a long time to get it right. I mean, film is different. You can be a little bit realer. You can be you can be clever with a camera. But uh, live, I've really enjoyed. And being in the theatre, I think I've been lucky to be in the theatre. And that's, I mean, I started off in the theatre. Uh, and um, yeah, it's my love, I suppose. Okay. Let's talk about park life and Blair. Uh -huh. Is it true, while I was doing my research, that I read somewhere that you hadn't actually heard of Blair before you recorded the track. Is that true or not? Uh, yeah, it's true. Is it really? It's it's sort of true. Yeah, I okay. I, I mean I might have I might have heard them before. I hadn't really because I used to play football for the New Musical Express. Yeah. In, um, music paper, and the editor of it was our captain and manager. And he came up to me and said, a young band um, of a, contacted me and they want you to do a song. They're called Blur. I went, I don't know who Blur are, mate. And blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, I mean, the Park Life album hadn't been out yet. They, I think they, there was a couple of albums out. They hadn't, they hadn't cracked on. Like, And I said to him, oh, should I take... Um, Oh, if I do this, should I get them to pay me or get a royalty? He said, oh, no, 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 don't get them to pay you, get a royalty. They're going places. So there you go. He knew what was going to happen. I didn't. Okay. And how was that whole experience? It must have been fantastic. Well, the thing was, uh, initially, I met up with them. I met up with Damon, or, you know, we had a chat. And then I went in the studio and I, I could have only been in there an hour knock the song out uh did the song and it was it was fun and but i never knew that it was gonna be what it was mm. and he, they said do you want to come and perform so i did a couple of little gigs they were only doing sort of shepherd's bush empire then and i don't know the windsor car the, the the whatever you know various big pubs but then it started escalating and i kept going on and doing it and then you know, the whole experience has been quite amazing over the last 20, 20 yeah. years. Yeah, I know, 20 tell years. me about it. This year, I, I, I was reminded of this just a few days ago. This year is the 30th anniversary of me meeting the boys that eventually formed Bad Boys Inc. 30. It's just, the mind absolutely boggles where the time goes. Um, I, I want to talk to you about that as well, mate, because... I've been very, like you, I've been very lucky to have performed in front of tens of thousands of people. And I'll never forget doing a gig once when there was 120,000 people at Crystal Palace for a, a huge radio station in, in London. It was mind boggling. And you know what? It didn't actually matter if we didn't get everything right on the day, because I thought to myself, well, the people at the back can't see us anyway, so it doesn't matter. So I actually preferred to perform in front of small audiences. 
a theater yeah. or something like that because i knew again it gave me that psychological edge that i there's no hiding place here so what do you prefer to perform with blair in front of 120,000 people or to a few thousand in a, a west end london stage well, I'll, I'll, I'll answer that question in a sort of different way. I think it's scarier. I've done, I've done plays in the, <clears throat> the there was a theatre called the Soho Poly that only seats 50. Okay. And you're right up against it. Yeah. You're right there. You can see the whites of their eyes. You see them. No that's, place. that's scarier. Yeah, than 120,000 at Glastonbury yeah, I get that. screaming for you and wanting you. And it wouldn't matter what you said. So I think that's a scarier scenario than the, the big thing, even though it's quite a wonderful feeling to do park life, you know, in front of 100,000 people all singing along with you, which is, you know, it's a wonderful feeling. Okay, we'll get on to some, the final quickfire questions about football in just a moment. But just to finish off the, the acting side of the, the chat here, what are you currently doing? Well, I've currently just finished a play called Cock, mm -hmm. which was a gay farce in the West End. Um, we did that, which was with originally Jonathan Bailey, who's the star of Edgerton now. Bridgerton. Bridgerton, yep. Star Bridgerton and a guy called Taron Edgerton, who was Rocket Man. Yeah, superb. But um, he was he had a bit of difficulty and had to leave the show. Okay. Um, but we had a great run in the West End, and that was wonderful. And I'm off to do Endeavour, the series now. Okay. Uh, I'm in the last ever series of that. I'm in the last ever episode. I'm I'm Roger Allen's brother in it. So okay. yeah, I've done that before. All right, we'll have to look out for that. I'll have to get it, see if I can somehow find it, because living in Austria, we don't get British television, sadly. So there will be ways of finding right. it, no doubt, no doubt. Right, just to finish off, mate, a few more quick-fire questions about football. Your fondest football moment? My fondest football moment, I think... I think, really, when Chelsea beat Bolton... 2-0 at Bolton and Lampard scored two. When we won the league for the first time um, since 1955 under Mourinho, um, that was kind of... I didn't think we'd do it. I think that was kind of... That was my fondest moment. And winning the European Cup 2012 when Drogba scored that penalty. Um, I mean, when he scored the header, actually. I mean, how we won the Cup that year is the european cup is unbelievable we we were outplayed by everybody we played and still won the cup so that that was very fond memory too you mentioned george best earlier so what's the best goal you've ever seen well the best goal i've ever seen i mean i don't know if it's the it's not like the best goal but it was the 68 european cup final yeah. And it was the goal that George Bass went round the goalie. Yeah. Because, goal. yeah, I don't know when, what goal it was, but it was it was just something about going around the goalie. I'd never seen anybody go round the goalie before. Mm -hmm. It was a kind of, in British football, you didn't go round the goalie. It was like Continentals went round the, dribbled round the goalie. And it kind of had, I always, after that, I played up front for a lot of my life before I sort of dropped back into midfield. <laughs> I always wanted to go round the goalie because of George Best. <laughs> I can remember you going round the goalie a few times when we played together for the Arsenal X Pros. I'm sure, I'm sure there's a few memories in there. Um, mate, just while we're on, I, uh, I, I, there's a question that's popped into my head and I hope you don't mind me asking it. If one player... If one player was suited to play the role of Jimmy in Quadrophenia, which player do you think would suit that role? God, that's very, uh, that's very hard to play. That's, uh, I, I mean, the only mod that's about is Leighton Baines, wasn't there? <laughs> <laughs> I thought of Jodie Morris. Well, yeah, I suppose Jodie. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Little to my head. I don't know. A yeah. lovable rogue, I guess. <laughs> right, last question. If you could play the role 
of a football player, past or present, who mm. would you like to play? That's a, that's a tricky one, really. I kind of think Hazard. Mickey Hazard? Not Mickey Hazard. Eden Hazard. <laughs> <laughs> Because he had a kind of, he's a brilliant player, but he had a kind of, he's kind of got a bit of attitude about him. Yeah. But, you know, if you don't, he, he's not that bothered. But when, swagger. He is that swagger. Yeah. I've seen him, I mean, I watched him a lot at Stamford Bridge. I've seen him absolutely tear things apart just on his own. Impossible to get the ball off. And I mean, no disrespect here, Mickey Hazard, he was a great player too. He was. Brilliant feet. I played against him. You couldn't get the ball off him. Mm -hmm. Played a couple of charity games with Mickey Hazard. Dearie me. Yeah. That's when you know, mate. That's when you know. You know you're not good enough, don't exactly. you? Exactly. That's when you know, <laughs> mate. Just play the game for fun. Forget these grandeurs of still trying to make it as a pro. <laughs> I know. It's, it's weird. I've done that a couple of times. With him, I saw that. And I played against Glenn Hoddle once. Oh. And... He was just different, different gravy to everybody else. Mm. He was pinging the ball about. There was a moment I was marking Glenn Hoddle, and I, I think I must have just turned around for a second just to look somewhere. I looked back, and he was gone. Gone. They're different gravy, man. <laughs> oh, do, do you you do you still play? Um, no. No, not really. I've got. I've signed up for a charity game on the seventh of July, and I think I'll pop on for twenty minutes or something. But yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. the the thing is, my hamstrings go pretty. If I start really pushing it, I'll do my hamstring. Yeah, I know that feeling, mate. That's why. That's why we stick to golf. <laughs> yeah, I think it's golf. <laughs> mate, listen. Thank you so much. Absolutely fantastic. Love talking to you today. And Brilliant. again. Thank you for coming on and the very best of luck, mate. Thank you. All right, mate. Let's keep in touch. Cheers, Ben. Okay. There we go. Phil Daniels, for me, one of our greatest actors. I would put him up with Ray Winston and Gary Oldman, an absolutely phenomenal actor. Thank you, Phil, for coming on. It was so nice to see him. If you don't follow him on Twitter, you must get online and follow him on Twitter. If you were a mod, if you were into that style of music, The Who, if you were into that type of clothing and style, he posts some brilliant stuff from down the years. Very witty guy as well. Guys, listen, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed today's watch, I'm going to do that thing where they get down with the kids where you're supposed to be all trendy. If you haven't subscribed... Please do. We've got plenty coming up in the coming weeks and months here on Celebrity Begs Banter. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed tonight's chat with Phil. And I will see you again very soon. All the best.